We're up in Cape York on the east coast in the Lockhart region. And we just fueled up at the new community of Lockhart. But we've decided to take a track that runs south out of here to the original mission site, a place called Old Lockhart. I don't know what that's going to be like. The local copper says it's impassable at the moment. And that's a good thing because no one else has been down here for quite a while. In fact, the locals up here travel by boat. So um, this could prove to be some really interesting four-wheel driving. That's if there's a track there at all. This is going to be an adventure. You better hang on. The Lockhart River Mission Road heads south of Portland's Road and it's about 54 k's to the old mission site. Locals warned us not to get too complacent because the first 30 k's is fairly easy. But then there's a blockage and after that things get real interesting. Along for the ride we've got Glenn Haddon from Roo Systems and yes he's bought the wife's 200. Being my second time at the Cape, when the opportunity came up to be here, I grabbed it. My favourite spot in Australia. And I've travelled around a bit now, but getting up here, getting amongst it, you never know what you're going to get into. Also joining us is Steve Robson from GIC Campers, and he's flying, uh, I mean driving, the mighty blue Hilux. Wonder if it'll hold together this time. I've got no expectations basically, because people can tell you what they want, all they want, but until you get there and do it, you don't know what you're going to come across. Glen's towing the Extreme Ranger, which uh, we've taken through the high country a few times, and we've beaten that up as much as possible and survived every single trip but that's the high country we wanted to bring it up here and test it in the cape and glenn's scared of crocodiles and didn't want to be sleeping outside in a swag so we generously lent him a uh, trailer that he can sleep up off the ground in well the further we get into this the more eroded it's getting what are we in for am i the only one that's really excited by that no mate we know you love your locker buttons <laughs> I'd sleep with them at night if I could. <laughs> From what I heard, you have been. <laughs> I'm surprised there's been no trees across the track, actually. <laughs> it's funny you say that. Well, we're coming right up on a tree across the track, as you said it. <laughs> okay, I won't say that again. <laughs> I can't tell you how good it feels to be heading off into the unknown with two mates that I know I can rely on. All jokes aside, it wasn't long until we discovered the blockage we'd been warned about. Oh, guys, you better hang on up there, I think. Um, we may have a situation down here. This blockage is the gateway to the rest of our adventure, and we've got to get through here if we're going to go anywhere at all. Come down and have a look, mate. Righto, here we go. <laughs> is that the exit? That's the exit. Oh, holy dooly. Yep, job for the chainsaw, I think, Leno. I don't like the look of these holes. I don't think that's a nest, but look at this. There's croc tracks down there. <laughs> Mate, keep the chainsaw running from when you leave your truck, I think, just in case. We might go and have a look. Oh, that water's all right. That's nice water. Bet the crocs think so, too. Oh, it's a bit soft over here, too, eh? Oh, look at that. Look at this, though. Glenno's bogged. <laughs> hey, Glenn, have a look at this, mate. Look at the claw marks. It's a bit eerie, eh? It is. And um, I'll tell you what, what we might try and do is not operate in this bit too much. Try and operate up there and operate over there, you know? Before we came down here, Gabriel, the elder, who said, uh, gave us permission to come here, um, the boys asked him, if there was any crocs down here. His word for it was infested. But we need to get through, we really do. So I guess all we can do here in this situation is have about eight eyes all the time, constantly. No one's gonna be uh, concentrating on looking one way without someone looking the other way behind them. We'll have the chainsaw handy and the ax, not that things like that are recommended as defensive toys. Letting Jack have free run of the place. I mean, he does anyway. But if anything does scare Jack, he'll let out a bark. He's good at that. He's off there at the moment. He's sniffing stuff out. I don't know what he's sniffing out, to be honest. We've got some real problems here, and we're going to be here for quite a while, because even after we've pulled this stuff out, we're going to have to get the trucks through here. This is, um, oh, this is just humus, you know? Three, four feet of leafy, wet, mouldering oh, yeah. rubbish. Ah, no worries, that's what we're here for, adventure. Let's get into it. 
what we might do, I'll go and get a winch extension strap and get Milo's winch out, bring it over here. If you guys can go up and hook whatever's going to come down easy, yep. like that. It looks like there's a loose log on top. Um, and if that stuff isn't too far in, and, and listen, when you, when you walk up there, one bloke looking one way, one bloke looking the other way. Isn't it good to know that we're doing all this within about, guaranteed, there's at least a croc within 30 metres. Guaranteed. No, probably bloody heaps of them. That's going to be a hell of a bog hole to get through. Oh, yuck. Look at the mud. It looks like it's going to float. There it goes. Yep, we've certainly got our work cut out for us here. This is going to be hard graft. And it's lucky we got the right blokes on board for the job, I reckon. But I can't even begin to explain how eerie it feels down here. And even though we've got a job to do, you can never get over those thoughts that there could be a croc anywhere around. I mean, we know there is somewhere, we just don't know where it is. But in this situation, if all you can do is keep on your toes. And that includes the camera crew. It wouldn't take long for a croc to just slip down from one of those surrounding banks and snap. Great job. I just wonder how many more times we'll be doing this <laughs> before we get anywhere. So we cut down the trees, get them into the hole. Hopefully we'll find some traction in that hole somewhere. And I'm first up in Milo. OK, you right? All right. I'm going to try and get in as far as I can. Come on, Milo, go! Whoops, wasn't too far, was it? This is just horrible under there. And like everything, whenever the wheel spins, it shifts a log. I'm just digging a bigger hole. See, no. I'm punching that log, mate, so if you could chuck it into the water, that one there, please. Ah, oh, it's good to have big, strong blokes around on a trip like this. Ah, poor old Milo reaches a point where she's going no that's further, better. and that's it. Yeah, that's about as far as I'm going to go, I think. Well, that first part, it's a little bit easier than I figured. I thought I'd be stuck twice, and I'm only stuck once. <laughs> oh, you'll love it. Just keep us safe up there, Jacko. It pays to know your vehicle when you're stuck in a hole like this. Could be a tree pushing a steering rod, all sorts of stuff happening under there. Mate, you can see I'm kind of really stuck on the right hand side here. So I'm thinking we need to double up off that big tree. Not that I'm so worried about Jack, I'm actually worried about Glenn. Thanks Steve. But if Jack's up there, well he's there early alert, isn't he? Jack's almost invaluable here. He's about ten pairs of eyes. Righto. Take up the tension. When you're in a hole this deep and it's full of trees, you can never be too sure whether you're propped up on a tree or the trees are actually helping. It's taken uh, three winches to get this far. Um, and we're still not out, but I think Milo's going to pop any minute, be up and away, with a bit of luck. This is a lot for teamwork though. The boys have done a great job. They're both working real, real hard. One more pull and yes, Milo's through. Good on you guys. After unhooking the winch, there's one more little tricky section before I can get out of the road and let the guys have a turn. It's a big hole that's got a big drop off on the entry when you go into and a step up on the right. other side too. That's it, dude. Hey, coming down now. Bit of momentum, that should do it. Whoppo, and we're over. You beauty! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes! Ah, bit of applause from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Come on, it's your turn, fellas. Jeez, we'll be booking the 200 series into the panel beaters, I think. <laughs> when I went over the edge there, I wore everything. I even got hit in the head with an apple. I bet no one thought about crocodiles for about half an hour. No. They said, no, no, we're getting out of here, those two big black oh. leaders. <laughs> <laughs> The plan's pretty simple. I'm going to spin Milo around and lodge it back into the hole. And that way the winch is pointing in the right direction, the truck's acting like a bit of an anchor because of the position in the hole, and that might give me a chance of hauling these guys through. All right, winch controller's on, lockers are on. I'm going to mosey down and then just power through, but I'll probably suss it out when I get there. 
Right, well Steve's version of Mosey means 100 miles an hour and then he's going to hit the bow. He's got the big tyres, he's got plenty of clearance but he's got a trailer on the back and that's one stiff mud hole. Wait, that'll hear No, he's just digging himself in now mate. <clears throat> this is something we've um, tried before and end up Cape York, come to think of it. Um, <clears throat> severely bogged with trailer. <clears throat> so what we're doing is we've got a strap here and then we're doubling up the winch through a pulley back to the Hilux. Steve's going to apply a whole lot of pressure without any driving and that's going to build up tension on the strap which just gives him that extra little kick when he does actually drive. So what we're hoping will happen is he'll edge out in one foot jumps but as you can see that is one severely stuck Hilux and it's got the trailer on the back, which is stuck. That's a lot of stuck. That blanket all right? We want to make sure the blanket's all right because things can go pop when you're doing this. It's good, mate. I think we're clear. Pretty soon, Steve-O's just about beat it. Well, all except for the ditch anyway. This is somewhere else where having a trailer can be a bit of a hazard. Whoop, burn out, he's away. <laughs> nice driving mate, well done. Our whole issue here is uh, time of course as usual because um, we're running out of light and of course as soon as it starts to get dark here on the creek we can't see what's going on and um, with all of uh, the snappy snappies around here that's not real good so um, we're just going to have to go as quick as we can now. Pretty soon it's Glenno's turn, oh boy, are we looking forward to this? The 200 weighs a lot more than Steve's Hilux. And he's got the steel trailer on the back too, so even with all the roof systems go in the world, pretty much guaranteed to get stuck in the same place. Yep, and right in the middle of this, out come the mozzies. We wanted to do a triple pull, but um, we might still need to. But we've, we don't have enough rope and we've run out of time, so we'll just give it a double up to start with and see how we go. With the winch doubled up, it's not long before we got a movie. It's a big effort. Right, now let's get out of the way and see how Glenn attacks the hole. And of course, in typical Glenno fashion, he doesn't attack it. He just lets the vehicle go through nice and easy, taking advantage of the traction control. Nice job, mate. Well done. You get the feeling that 200 would just go straight through a brick wall from stop. Man, it's got some... Go the big 200! Trailer's through unscathed. 200's all right. Hey, Glenno. I just need you out of the road so we can get uh, Milo in to get the camera cars through. Right, well Steve, Glenn and I might have got through that gateway, but it's pitch black by the time we get the camera cars across. This oh. is not an ideal situation as we're now up right. on what is essentially a little island surrounded by croc infested creeks. Jungle on all sides, bamboo everywhere. Ooh. I wanted to check and see if we could push on further and you know, get away from the creeks a little bit, get some distance between us and the crocs. We've got a muddy bottom, we've got a tree across the track, and it's night time. I might just go and have a quick look actually. I don't really fancy chainsawing this at night though. Hey guys, um, I've come about 150 yards past the tree that's across the track. It's all really soft to get up here, although we could probably drive it. Um, but I've reached what's left of an old log bridge sort of affair that's a bit stuffed. So I think we'll just punch into the side of the track a bit um, and uh, set up camp. Situation like this, there's not much else we can do really. Um, it's too dark. We do know what's around here, and um, there's too many of them. 
So, big fire, bit of companionship. Probably about 12 hours sleep because tomorrow we're going to be working our butts off just to get through to here. I'll tell you what, this is really exciting. It's really gone, all of a sudden it's gone from reasonably easy four wheel driving to 100 yards in seven hours. <laughs> Here we go for crocodiles. That's where the fire is. Don't want them coming into camp tonight. I want to be alive to get home. This is not exactly where you want to be as far as campsites go, but we don't have any option. We're surrounded by crop creeks, at least it's a little bit drier up here. But what we have done is we've pushed the vehicles into the bush on each side so that we're circling the campfire. Some of the camera crew decide to sleep on top of the trucks. That's not a bad idea either, just quietly. At least you're sort of last on the menu, aren't you? Let the dog off the leash, not that he's ever on one, and pray. Fair bit of praying, actually. It's day two, I've done a bit of a head count, and everyone is alive and well. That's pretty amazing, actually. But we've got another big day ahead of us, by the look of things, so it's time to get packed up and get on the way. This track has not been driven on for years. Yeah, I think you might be right, Glenno. There's uh, minimum eight months, certainly not since the last wet, but I'm starting to think maybe years before that too, because this is kind of ridiculous. Ridiculous is how we like it, isn't it? <laughs> well, we do best. Um, this is amazing, isn't it, really? Like, we've come probably a whole 50 metres since our camp last night. Uh, log over the track, no big deal, but look, right in front here, great big uh, grassy wall. This is the one we climbed through yesterday. Might actually hop out and do a bit of axing first. Around here, the bamboo just goes berserk. It's just like grass in your garden, you know? And man, it can get as thick as... It can be almost impenetrable, but in most cases, because it is so big, it's actually flopping over, which means you can get underneath it and find out where it starts and stops. That's what you've got to look for. And then you can start thinking about hacking your way through. We'll just, don't, we won't even worry too much about getting it out of the road. We'll just chop this and then drive over it. We've kind of reached a stage in this trip where things like chainsaws, axes, shovels and trucks and winches are really important. You really, you know, can't afford to get carried away and bust something or whatever because you don't know how many times you're going to need it from here on in. So we're under a different rule here where everything gets used absolute minimum just to do the job with the least amount of effort. That's perfect, mate. We'll just put a thing up here, probably about two thirds of the way along, and uh, we'll just use the winch on Milo. I'll go and drive through the bamboo first. Here comes the battering ram. Easy. No ah. boomer at all. The tree's down across the track, but it forks off, the branches fork off, and in the middle of the, one of the forks is another smaller tree sitting to the side. So. The worry here is we're going to drag the tree, hopefully dragging it off the track, but because there's a branch on the other side of it, we may bring the other little tree down, which will mean a bit more chainsaw. But this is a gazetted road, it's, it's a public road, everyone's allowed through it. So once we're finished, everyone will be able to get through in a four-wheel drive. <laughs> a big four-wheel drive, good four -wheel with drive. some good mates and a whole bunch of tools. Jacko, Well, he wants to play fetch the stick. <laughs> okay, we're right to go. Steve and Glenn have cut quite a few of these trees, so now we're going to try and shift them. When you're doing this kind of stuff, especially in a place like this, you've really got to think about safety all the time. The last thing you want is to cut a tree, get it three quarters of the way through and it suddenly goes twang and knocks you over and breaks something. You're not going to get out of here in a hurry. Okay, I'm going to reverse now. 
Oi, snaps it, but it went the other way. Looking good. Okay, ready, one, two, three. Beautiful. Let's rock on to the next adventure. Which <laughs> is probably about another 50 metres down there. <laughs> With the logs forward, we're free to move. Oh, there we go, straight through the trees. Beautiful. A whole 50 metres <laughs> until we get to that washed out crossing. And although it doesn't look as treacherous as it did in the dark, it's still going to cause a few issues. I know that, especially for the vehicles pulling trailers. Milo should be okay through here, I'm hoping. As long as I can keep the wheels up and on the traction and not uh, knock anything under the diffs. Oh, good old Milo, look at that. Walk straight through, no problems. Hey, mate, hey, can you call me through this bamboo? Just keep half an eye on the lights and the, the stuff without getting yourself whipped. Bamboo's not the sort of thing you want to just go raging straight through without having a look at it. I mean, apart from the fact that enough of it can stop the vehicle like running into a fishing net, it can also flick through, break windows, especially if you hit it straight on, and of course the worst of all is when it flicks through the window and cops you in the eye. Steve-O's got a fair bit of ground clearance, and it hasn't got a bad departure and approach angle, this Hilux, but it has got a trailer on the back, and that's just going to make things really hard because, of course, it's the trailer that's going to hit something, isn't it? Not so much the trailer, but the drawbar. Hang on, trailer's stuck. Is it punched into that log? Ah, uh, that bit of corrugated. Oh, OK, that'll rip through that with Steve-O driving. Just about over it. Steve-O, just go back a little bit. Right, I try it from there, mate. A little bit of a run up. Steve O might be able to launch out of this. Yes, way to go. Wow. He had it in the air again. Oh. <laughs> oh I think he used to drive a bulldozer in a prior life, old Steve O. Now, I know Glenno's going to approach this with a little bit more technical forethought than the old Steve O. This will test the traction control on the 200, that's for sure. Now, Glenn's got a really good hand on the wheel for finding just the right spot. And he's done it once again. He's managed to find all the high logs here. OK, I'm getting out of your road. That's good. You got the front over and the logs moved a bit, so... Should go. Hang on. Hold on. Steve-O, what's the stuck on, mate? Is the drawbar's the... on the ground. Hey, Glenn, do you want to um, go back about two or three feet and just try and bounce it up? Oh, go! Down. Uh, the traction control cut in too slightly. Okay, Glenn, try the sea bale approach and bounce it across. Okay, give her another hit. You're away. Uh, it's sort of wedged on the trailer. Oh, you're a bit bogged too, aren't you? No, you can't go backwards no, because the trailer's no, stuck. Stop there. Stop so we've there. got no option here, we've just got a witch. They just don't make them tough enough, do they? Not for us. Do you like a number plate, Squire? Thank you. Bit of a tip there. Those number plates are sharp. It's exactly what you don't need hanging around a rope, especially when it gets loose. In this country, even when you pick a really big tree to winch off, you want to keep an eye on it because the ground's really soft and nothing here, because it's so wet all the time, has to have a big root bowl which means that you can crank onto almost anything, you know, and think it's going to do the job. But if it's a little bit hollow or it's a little bit wet from last wet season, whatever, it could fall over. So Steve's keeping half an eye on the tree and I'm keeping half an eye on the winch. I don't want Glenno to go too far on this. Just pull himself far enough so that he can drive out of there. At this stage, we want to save every turn of that winch we can. Because I've got a feeling we're going to need it a fair bit up the track. OK, mate. OK, hang on. To make sure Glenn can drive out, I reckon we'll drop a bit of air out of those tyres. OK, big heavy car, like the 200, towing the trailer, and not just because it's got all that has been in it, we're going to go from the uh, dirt road pressure of 35 down to 20. 
I don't have to explain why, <laughs> we've got no traction. So that's where you need to be. Obviously, in this terrain, the last thing you want is to be dealing with punctures. You can imagine trying to get a jack under this at the moment, it'd be an absolute pain. Um, good stiff sidewall tyre like the Cooper, it's a great thing. Very interesting to see if dropping this can get us out of here. I don't think it will, but you never know your luck. Certainly we're going to need them down for the next uh, section of track anyway. But I'll tell you what, when you're chucking it into tracks that no one's travelled down, you really need good rubber. You've got to have faith in your tyres. 20 pounds, Glen OA. Eh? Good stuff. We might have to lend a bit of weight to it, but... Oh, Glenno's about to hop in, that's a fair bit of weight. <laughs> Come on, Glenno! Yes! He's through! Oh, good on you, mate! Awesome! Hopefully we can cover a bit more ground and what's more, we can finally get away from those creeks. I can breathe again. I'm sure glad we didn't have any guest appearances last night, I can tell you. A few hundred metres drive away from that creek and the track has opened right up. It's a good feeling to be on the move again, I can tell you. And we can soak up some of this beautiful scenery too. To put it into perspective, it just took us 24 hours to drive 200 metres. Wow! In the 1920s and 30s, when they started to open up the Cape, it had already been opened up for mining, but they started to get a lot more possessive about the land, our story. I'm talking about white men here. The black men, the Aboriginals, and they were spread all over the place in their little clans and sort of extended family groups, and the government rounded them up. And the missionaries wanted to, you know, give them Christianity as the great white man's gift. So the missionaries set up missions. And in the case of Cape York, they set up a mission at the old mission site where we're heading. I mean, there was troubles right from the start, obviously, because you're bringing different clans together, and 1939, the Second World War started. So they told the Aboriginals just to go back bush. After the war, most of the Aboriginals were still hanging around the mission. So back came the missionaries, and the government added their support. They tried everything, you know, they tried growing crops and mangoes and all sorts of stuff. In fact, Mango trees, there's bound to be mango trees there when we get there because they always seem to stick around, but nothing else really worked for them. It really wasn't self-sustaining. and That situation hung around for another 20 years or so before they decided to move it to the new site because they'd had the American airfields there and the jetty there. So they had some infrastructure there already that they could use. By 1970, the population had been relocated to the range and that's when the old mission site became the old mission site. It's about 10 kilometres to Nanda, and from there I can see that it's approximately 20 k's down to the old mission. We're just coming up on the crossing of the Lockhart River itself, and at this time of year, in June, it's not that much of a challenge. Even though you've got to remember that no one's been here for at least eight or nine months, so could be all sorts of soft stuff happening under there. But after a bit of a look, we drove straight through. No dramas at all. This crossing is approximately two thirds of the way along the old mission road, and just the other side is a fork in the track. One way leads to the old mission site, and the other to Nanda. Nanda is where an old homestead used to be situated. The homestead where they ran all this land from before they handed it back to the Aboriginals. Now we decided to take a bit of a detour down that track and see what we could find. You never know, it could be a good place to camp down there somewhere. The tracks were fairly overgrown and very hard to follow, to be honest. No one's been here for ages. But before long, we've stumbled across what looks like it might have been a homestead or something. Fascinating, isn't it? Just fascinating. We're not sure. I'm not 100% sure. When we pulled up, I thought, this is just a bit too industrial to be a homestead. It's on massive concrete foundations. And it's got the steel framing and it's so tall. But then inside, a couple of old fridges, what could have been an old cold chest, uh, the panes of glass. 
anywhere out here, glass is at an absolute premium. So to have a louvered glass window in a shed, no, you wouldn't do that. And then Glenno's found the newspaper stuck to the glass, which was probably a version of just a, a sunshade, you know, keep some of the light out. Um, that, that tends to indicate it, it was a homestead or, or certainly people lived in it. There's been a little bit of change happening over the years. Someone's wired back a pole there and a couple of other things. So possibly since the 1980 date that Glenn found on the newspaper, someone's come back here, done a little bit of renovating, so to speak, maybe stayed for a little while. Let's assume that that structure has seen 30 years of wet seasons. There's hardly anything left. The nails are rusted, the timber's just about rotted through, the tin's blown away, and the steel structure's spotting holes all over the place. That's Mother Nature at its strongest, the wet season. It's just insane what it can do. Wow. I love playing detectives in the bush. It's good value, isn't it, really? Trying to work out how people used to live. With the day drawing to a close, we find a bit of a clearing with enough room to set up camp. Oh boy, it's nice to be able to set up while it's still light. Especially after last night. If you're going to marinate something, you really need to let it stay in the fridge for quite a while. You know, three or four hours bare minimum, Chris reckoned, for his recipe. But I was lucky. I did it last night when I had a little bit of time. Okay, I put in, oh look, you know I hate doing quantities, but I put in about half a cup of olive oil. I never go bush without olive oil. Soy sauce. I guess if I used half a cup of olive oil, I probably used about a quarter of a cup of the old soy. Barbecue sauce, I put in probably about a quarter of a cup. Worcestershire sauce, oh, a lot less. Probably an eighth of a cup, something like that. It seems so weird that brown sugar should work so well with meat. But you add some nice flavours and some brown sugar and wow, you come up with this sort of glazing effect. It's just fantastic. Tabasco is fire water. You've got to be really careful with it. I used a tablespoon of Tabasco. Okay. Uh, curry powder, I used a tablespoon of that too, just to balance it up. And the last two ingredients, garlic and hot chilli. I've used probably a lot more than I should, but these are two of my favourite ingredients. Let's see how it goes. Oh. Oh, I'm cooking this in Glenn's, Glenn's GIC trailer, or the one he's pulling. Well, I'm not going to fit them all on, but I've done pretty good. I've got a big pot of spuds up here. I'm going to mash those up in a minute because you can't have lamb cutlets without having some mashed potato. And look at that. No dramas at all. I'm going to go off and have a nice cup of black tea. And when I come back, these should be just about done. We'll have a look at them then. Hey, Steve-o. How's the mash? All mashed, mate. Oh, you're too good, mate. Where you go? Right there. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, hey, mate. That superb match, just what you'd expect. Right, oh, no, I think we're ready to go. I need a taste victim. Ah, tester. I reckon that's got to be you, Glenno. Seeing as it's uh, your pull in the GIC. You go, mate. You don't mean food. <laughs> have you got a knife and fork? Oh, you have. What's that marinade like, mate? <laughs> <Eat> my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? Mm. Smells great. Well, I've got to go because I've got a queue of people waiting here to try these chops. It's day three of our trip and we're just outside Nunda. Today we're planning to get back on course and head for the old mission site. We've just over 20 k's to cover, but we don't know what the road's going to be like as we move forward, I can tell you. So it's time to pack up camp and head out. I wonder what we've got in store today. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of cow poo and horse poo up here. There must be beasts all over the place, eh? Where do they walk and to and from in this stuff? It's just thick. Oh, by the look of this bit up here, they're the only ones keeping the road open. Not far down the track and I've run into a sloppy section that was disguised by its dried out surface crust. It's easy to be fooled by this sometimes and I'm easily fooled. And this time, well, I'm a victim too. This one's no good. We're pulling Milo out. 
the uh, ran into a nice stretch of mud here and it just sank. And I got like two metres from it and my boots sank, so we're not going that way. This is a cow sink, which means someone sunk a couple of cows in here at some stage? No. There must be a lot of animals around here, a lot of stock from the old property. Um, we can see their hoof prints everywhere. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say that given the denseness of the bush everywhere, this is where they live. Up and down what's left of the old track. Um, certainly it looks like that. It's rough as, and it's really chewed up. He's loving this. He can't wait to pull Milo out. Winching backwards is a little bit different to winching forwards. I mean, for one thing, there's less weight in the back of the vehicle. Well, there should be once you've got the handbrake out anyway. And that means it's going to float up a little bit higher in this kind of a situation. So really, winching backwards should be a little bit easier. Except you can't see what you're doing, can you? I still haven't got any drive. I'm turning my wheels, but this mud is so slippery. It's just packed up the tyres almost instantly. And of course, just being here is churning it all up like a big concrete mixer, so I'm actually making it worse than it was before, just by coming out. Anyway, we're out, no problems. Steve spotted a bit of a diversion around so we can get on our way. Even though these roads are gazetted, public roads, the local people ask that you get their permission. And that means, you know, you have to approach the local councils. The numbers are all over the place. Sometimes it can be kind of hard because very, very rare, especially here, you'll get anything in writing. All you get is a name, someone to talk to, and they say yay or nay. It's a very flexible, very loose system. A lot of people play around the edges of it. We, um, we ask for permission, and it's funny. Sometimes you can ask three people, you get two yeses and one no. Just try to remember the names of the people who said yes. This whole area is really boggy, and after getting stuck once already, I'm not going to take any chances. There's no way around this water crossing, and it looks as if it could be a bit of a showstopper. Deep, murky, pretty horrible actually. I'll check the bottom, see if it's soft. I'm staying sharp here because this looks like a perfect home for a croc. All the more reason not to get bogged in the middle, I can tell you. I'm still finding it hard to tell if it gets any worse further in, but hey, we've got to take a gamble. We're so close to our goal, and I'm not going to give up that easily, I can tell you. Come on, Milo, don't let me down. Let's do this. Yes, I'm through. Beautiful. Come on, guys, your turn. Let's get moving. We've got a mission to get to here. Oh, I feel good now. I was a bit nervous about that one. But um, I'm through, and by the sounds of it, Steve's through. This leaves Leonard. should be right. Right now, the landscape has changed dramatically. It's opened right up and there's a whole different smell in the air. I reckon it's because we're close to the coastline and it almost looks as if that's the coastline in the distance, in a sort of a mirage. That means one thing, we're not far from reaching our objective, the old mission site. According to the VMS, we're only 10 kilometres away. Surely we're going to make it through now. Ah, oh, wait on, what's this? We're nearly there. And we've got this dirty great big hole. That looks muddy and slow and crocodile infested and all those horrible things. I'm not gonna walk it. it looks like Milo's not gonna drive it either. Okay, that approach didn't work. Let's try the side. Hopefully not drop a wheel down so far, the old girl tips over. Whoops, it's just the wrong side. But we're nearly through. Oh, did I say nearly loud enough there? Even Jack thinks this isn't that funny. Everything I do now is digging the truck down. I'm not too happy about this. 
Jack doesn't even want to get out of the truck. This crop's real close. This is not good. Hey guys, um, can someone come and run my winch cable for me? On my way, mate. Oh, good thing the boys are here. This is a really steep angle. Not a great place to have your bum sitting in the water, I can tell you. Yeah, mate. Stay go. How you going there, John? Oh, not real good. <laughs> Hang on, mate. That is the classic sin. Serious dire situation. I thought he was gone a few times. I thought that'd just be another little water crossing, you know. It looked pretty deep as I went in. So I backed off and tried going around the side there. But, uh couldn't get out there either. So now I've slid across and I'm right in the middle of it. I'm sitting here on about 45 degrees. I've got a feeling there'll be water running in the back of the truck about now too. I'm wondering what I got up there actually. Apart from the dog that is, but he needs a wash. All right, stand clear. The technique here is to let the winch build up a fair bit of strain on the rope and then just give it a little bit of punch on the clutch and hope the wheels spring forward. A little bit like snatch strapping, but with the winch. Have to double her up. Bueno's got the snatch block. With a little bit of doubling up, hopefully this winch will pull us out. Of course, the beauty thing about a double up is that you, get, you do get twice the torque, twice the pull, so it um, might be enough to do the trick. Busted rope, bugger. Oh dear. Got a busted cable, it's gone on backwards. The winch does the free spool. We're stuck in a creek. Everything in the back of the truck's getting wet. You know, this is amazing. I mean, here we are, we've gone through so much. And according to the VMS, you know, probably a kilometre and a half, that's it. Just over this hill, and that's the mission. That's our mission. You know, just over there. Oh. You reckon we can get there? I don't know. Alright, now we'll just do a couple of granny knots, just to make sure. Switch in. I'm not really comfortable about doing this either, not after tying all those granny knots in the rope. But good old Milo, the motor never stopped running. We might have filled up with mud, but we're through. Oh, boy. Well, that's one truck across. Let's see how we go with the rest. This look like a good campsite or what? <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. My bum is dry. Did you hear that, Jack? Now, that's why you've come forward, is it? I really thought we were done then. That was full on. You were like that, like that. Mate, I don't know how you didn't go for a drink. Stupid! Rule number one, check with stick. Stupid! Looks like we're building another bridge. The plan's to run around the side where I went a bit earlier, but this time we're going to do a bit of preparation. Cut some stuff from there, dump it in there. That might balance it up. Steve-o, it's nice knowing you, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. All right? You got no faith in the Lux or me? That is a big hole. Don't worry. I'll take care of your wife and your children. That's if you make it through there Just so you can get that. Just marvellous. No, no, I'm turning around now. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, copy, John. I'm trusting you'll give me great guidance across here. <laughs> I'll probably do more pointing than anything else. Right hand down, mate. Yep, that's good, Steve. Just, I'd go straight ahead from there. Once I roll into this and I feel my front wheels hit that other bank, I'm just giving it the berries and coming up swinging left. I knew the berries would be partly in there somewhere, mate, so I'll just warn everyone and we'll stand back. That is advisable. Good to see Milo's well out of the way too. Steve, out of six wheels, there was a there where only one of them was on the ground. <laughs> Lucky for the rude chip and exhaust, eh? Yes. I think I'll be able to drive up near, up that other side now that he's knocked the bank off. And once I get the back wheels there, and then I'll shoot up. 
So you don't think that, um, you know, just launching into it and having the trailer float through mid-air is the way to do it? Well, it is one way of doing it, <laughs> but I've got 3,000 k to go south yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I own that vehicle. Yes. <laughs> I think we stick the blade on the front of the Hilux next to you. Right on, we're awake. Okay, this one's a doozy. Looking good, mate. Looking good. Nose into the sand now. You're ploughing. No, stop. Go right back. If you can. Okay, mate. We'll just uh, give you a little tug, eh? Sounds good to me. No way I wanted to end up in that water. Winching's the safest option. 200 hasn't got quite the ground clearance that the Hilux has got. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that, she's done some ploughing. Can you imagine going to all this effort and there's no pub there? What? Oh. You need nothing cable tight, Leno. Someone's got the telly. <laughs> K and a half to go, can we do it? I'll tell you what guys, brilliant job. I think we've cracked it. There's a fence line there, we're going downhill. I reckon very, very soon we're gonna drop out on this mission. Well done. That last obstacle, well, I hope it was the last obstacle, was an absolute ripper. Yeah, it certainly turned out to be. It didn't look like much, but it turned out to be. It did need to be a full-on uh, recovery, didn't it? Oh, big time. Hey, no one's driven this bit, for sure. According to the VMS, in about very shortly, we should be a left. Probably all where all those trees are. Oh, trailer on the left there, Steve. Yeah, I bet you that's not a GIZ, John. That'll be out of here by now. Yeah, too right, mate. There's signs of civilization everywhere here. Well, old, rusty, dented ones anyway. And we know we're just about on top of the mission. You think I'm excited? You bet I am. <laughs> wow, doesn't get much more adventurous than this, does it? And here we are, right on top of where the mission should be, and we can't find it. The grass is too high. <laughs> this is just amazing. But just over the water course, and things start to feel different again. This time, it's as if we're in some kind of old garden that hasn't been pruned for a couple of hundred years. All my years of four-wheel driving, I've never seen anything quite like this. The growth here is just phenomenal. You know, obviously there's been settlement at some stage because there's there's mango trees all the way around and this stuff I'm punching through now, it's all nice and flat. Oh, we got a water tank here. Well, I guess that might count as ruins. What do you reckon? Looks like something that uh, might have used to hold a water tank up in the air. Yeah, 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 there's stuff here everywhere. About to go through a change of grass here. This is completely different for some reason. I got a feeling that might have all been gardens or something back there, maybe. Yeah, it just stopped in a straight line, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's weird. According to my uh, VMS here, we should be about 20 or so metres from a track that just goes directly left onto the beach. That's what it looks like, mate, right in front of us here. Hey guys, I'm right in the middle of this grave here. This has got to be the mission. It's been an epic mission, mate. It's the biggest, biggest trip I've ever made in so many ways it's not funny. I'm glad I was here for it, John. It was an amazing journey, guys. Oh, what an amazing journey. This is, uh, this is incredible. I sort of feel like a, a pioneer again, coming down here, you know, like breaking through a track that hasn't been broken in so long. And look over there on the left, that looks like we've got huts. This is it guys, we've hit the beach, we've hit the camps. This is the mission, this is the end of our mission. Well, we're here, this is amazing. This is absolutely fantastic. I am absolutely beside myself. Oh, there's the ocean! There's huts and stuff everywhere around here. It doesn't look like there's any people. Yep, this is something else, fellas. Wow, we've made it, and what a perfect time to arrive. 
What a beautiful place. It's just spectacular. And you know what? The buzz from the sheer achievement of getting here, oh, it's just unreal. Wow, we've got it all to ourselves too, guys. Let's enjoy it. Congratulations, Cleno. Well done, Thank mate. You. Best Thanks, adventure mate. I've ever had. Thanks, John. Good on you. Well done. That's well fantastic, done, Steve. Mate. We better set up camp. Come on, guys. Yeah, let's do it. One more camp. How good's this? I've had so many adventures with four-wheel drive action. But honestly, this one, this one is the best. We have overcome so many things to get down this track. Not the world's longest track, but every 100 metres, every 50 metres, every 20 metres. We're building bridges, we're, we're recovering each other, we're doing stuff, you know? It's been the hardest trip ever, and all on a gazetted road. But the guys have been unreal. We've fought our way through, no matter what, to get here to the ruins of the old Lockhart Mission. And now I'm here, I know why we tried so hard to get here, because this is just fantastic, it's just brilliant. It's a shame we can't have a beer and celebrate or something, you know, but all that doesn't matter, because this time, the sense of just arriving, of making it, is incredible, it really is. I'll tell you what, this is real four-wheel drive action, right out there. Oh, I love it. It's just unreal. I'm going to go and find somewhere to camp. Might see you up here sometime, eh? But don't come without chainsaws, picks, shovels, ropes, snatch straps, winches, the works burgers, and a big sense of adventure. This is unreal. Good on you guys. Right, let's break out the company shotgun, the company bazooka, and the company box of grenades. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't bring any, Sean? <laughs> oh, Jack. Good crap out of me. <laughs> look, look beyond here, just over the top of that ridge. What's that? Is that a log up there, or is that just a peacefully sleeping croc? I just heard a slithering sound. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, there was nearly a second slithering sound down my pants. I'm doing this a few times in a... Ha ha, what's that floating down the street? Sleep. Yay. Oh, my lens is filthy. Oh. See that? <laughs> I got mud in my hair. I got mud everywhere. I know what you think, and I haven't got any mud on the bit up the back. Yeah. Oops. Gee, still on. Ah, oh, sorry about that. You want to come for a look, Jack? You might find one of your long lost rallies. Come on. One of the dingo variety, I mean. <laughs> 1980. Okay. St George were reigning premiers of the uh, NRL. Need to know that. Jacko said it all. He fell asleep. <laughs> Not me. I thought you were gone, mate. I swear I just thought you were gone. So did I. So did I. I really did. We're looking good. I found a bag, a bag of old popcorn. That's even better. That might be all I get for dinner tonight. We're on the wrong side of the creek. The food's in the other car. How Milo gets at those angles like that, and he still manages to somehow keep it upright. Yeah, I'm glad he goes first anyway. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying as me. Good on you, Jono. I'll go anywhere you go first, John. <laughs> Welcome to Ruthie's Ruthless Tales. Go on, grab a slice of fair dinkum, Australia. Get your dose of Ruthie and put a smile on your dial. <laughs> 